Hi everyone, it's Emmanuel here. I want to encourage you in this video that you will continue to serve God and to do whatever He has committed to you, no matter how small, how little you think that thing you're doing is. Because um, one of the most widely known parables uh, is the parable of the talents. Okay, we find that account in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25, and also in the Gospel of Luke, uh, we find the same account. And uh, many times we hear that parable, but it actually doesn't ring uh, a bell to us because it just it's kind of like just flies over our head and so that's what I want to do with you in this video to examine that, that particular parable again and to encourage you why you should continue to serve God uh, love him and honor him faithfully and do whatever he's given you to do even though you think it's difficult even though you feel like you've been persecuted and all these things Keep on following Jesus. Keep on honoring Him, doing what He's given you to do. Because uh, if you keep on uh, pursuing and 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 uh, being steadfast till the end, you will see Jesus, and you will have a reward with that. And uh, and the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter twenty-five, starting in verse fourteen and all the way down to thirty. Uh, obviously, we can't read the whole thing, but um, you probably have heard of the account where uh, Jesus was saying that the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling off to a far country. Okay, and um, he called his own servants here and delivered his goods to them. And so the three uh, pr people that he talked about in this parable, the first one he gave five talents, the second person um, he gave two talents, and the last one he gave one talent. And the five went off and traded with another five talents, the two traded with another two talents, and the last guy, okay, the third guy actually went and dug uh, a hole in the ground and, and hid his talent there. Uh, and, and so uh, Jesus is saying that when that uh, master came back, he started seeing, you know, what happened to these people. The five told Jesus, oh, I've, I've you know, traded with your five and I got another five talents. And so Jesus says, um, uh, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 21. Now there's something to realize there. Uh, there's actually two things that Jesus says in verse 21. He says, well done, good faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. You see, Jesus today may have commit, may, it may seem to us that, you know, uh, for some people, it seems like, oh, it's a big task. For some people, it se seems like, oh, it's very little. It's, you know, I don't even know if it means anything. But I want you to realize, Jesus, you've been given a few things and you were faithful over them. And so I will make you ruler over many things. You see that? Just because you think that what you're doing today is small, uh, you seem like, oh, nobody's benefiting from them. And you know, no. Jesus is saying, because you've been faithful to a few things, now I will make you a rule over many things. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, so as long as we're faithful to God, uh, that's what it matters. And he says, enter into the joy of my Lord. So number one is we get to enter into the joy of our Lord Jesus Christ if we truly have repented of our sins and trusted in him and living a holy life by the power of the Holy Spirit um, in true faith and love for him, then uh, keep on serving God because no matter how small a thing is, oh, Jesus is going to reward us. And uh, he basically went down and says the same thing to the second, um, the person with the two talents. Okay, he says the same thing. You've been, you've been faithful for a few things. I'll make you rule over many things and turn to joy, my Lord. That's the second person. The last person who dug, the uh, dug a hole in the ground and put their one talent there, oh, that's not going to be good. That's not a person that you and I want to be <laughs> because we want to um, hear what Jesus said to him. Okay, and uh, Jesus says, But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed, so you ought to have uh, deposited money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my interest, my talents with my interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. Okay. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. From him who does not have, even when he has, will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, now we're going to really look at this. Because the person who really dug um, the, the, the hole in the ground. Now, why did Jesus basically, he's casting the person into outer darkness, which is hell. Okay, why is he not saved? Why is he not entering into the joy of his Lord? And uh, some of you look at this and say, oh, isn't that justification by works then? Because uh, just because he didn't do that, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's not entering heaven. Well, you need to understand, the, the, again, the spirit of the law, the spirit of what Jesus is trying to say. The meaning of what he's trying to say is over and over the Bible says, your faith, uh, if it's genuine, is backed up by works. 
Faith without works is dead. We are saved by grace. But this grace, if it is genuine, uh, if it's truly transformed us by faith, it will lead us on a lifestyle of bearing good fruits, living a life of holiness and re uh, repentant life every day before God. And yet this guy, what he did was he, he dug deep and uh, dug a hole, okay, and hid everything there. It's basically a dead faith. Okay, it's basically really not doing what God has told him to do, not fulfilling the calling that God has for him. Now, many people are, are, are in that category, uh, unfortunately, it's because Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, on that day, many people are going to come to him saying, Lord, Lord, you know, I've done all these things, but he says, I never knew you because you practice lawlessness. So there are people who, there are actually two types of people. There are t people who uh, do things for God, quote unquote religious things. But uh, Jesus, because you keep on practicing a lifestyle of sin, uh, you are not going to enter the kingdom of heaven, according to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Uh, but for this unprofitable servant, you've got to understand because uh, the people, there are many people who Jesus has called. Uh, Jesus, for many are called, uh, but few are chosen. You see, um, that's why we really want to be faithful to what God has given us. Um, no matter how small it is, I want to encourage you, don't be that unprofitable servant where you just hide your talents, where you just, you know that God is a calling in your life. You know that God has told you to do something, but because of whether it's things of this life, whether, you know, you're fearful of what other people will say about you, what your family, what your friends think about you, and you just hit that talent there, uh, you were ashamed of the gospel, you didn't want to tell people about Jesus, and uh, you just want to hold on and wait until Jesus comes back and, and uh, that's not the, uh, the, the person that you want to be because Jesus says that he's going to say to this unprofitable servant, he's going to say, you be cast out to the outer darkness and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, guys, what we want to do at this hour is to realize, you know, not everybody is going to be uh, the Billy Graham of his times. Okay, if you're preaching to millions and millions of people, not even, you know, a very, very minority of people are going to do that. But you know what? Uh, at the end of the day, um, it's not how... Uh, how much uh, we do for God. It's how, uh, it's the quantity, the, the, the heart that we do for God. That's what, uh, that's what uh, Leonard Ravenhill says. It's not the qu qu uh, quantity of our work. It's the quality of our work. Are we really having a true motivation to honor Jesus, to love Him, to do this for Him? And if we are, then that's what it matters. And I just want to end up this uh, video by sharing with you a, a testimony um, actually, uh, a, t a testimony of a vision a person uh, who, who received. And um, uh, in this vision, this person uh, basically went to heaven and he saw that this person, okay, and he saw, uh, somehow he saw this person was seated uh, in one of the highest places in, in heavens, on, on thrones. That's what the Bible talks about. You know, we're going to sit on thrones with Jesus if we overcome certain things. And um, he was asking Jesus, he was like, Jesus, what did this person do? Uh, he must have been, a, uh, you know, like a, a martyr who died for the faith, done mighty miracles and all these work for you. He must have done all that stuff for you, God. And Jesus uh, revealed to, to this person what he did on earth. And uh, to his surprise, uh, Jesus, yeah, Jesus says, yes, he was a martyr. But he wasn't martyred in a way that you thought he was. He wasn't, you know, being killed, you know, for holding a Bible in his hand or something. He simply um, was a person who lived on the streets. He was a beggar. And uh, one day, um, he used to be an alcoholic. And uh, one day, he received the gospel track. And, and uh, to keep the long story short, he basically uh, believed in Jesus. He gave his life to Jesus. And ever since, he had tried so hard every day of his life to please God. And um, there are many things that happened. He lived in a small little cupboard uh, with card boxes on the streets, yet he was always so thankful to God. And um, one day he saw another drunkard uh, basically passed out in front of him on the streets. And uh, he, what he did was because it was in the middle of winter and it was snowing, it was cold. What he did is he went over and covered this person, okay, with his own body uh, so that he wouldn't freeze to death. And by that act, because he covered him, that person uh, to, to preserve his life, uh, he ended up dying because it was so cold, he got killed. And he went to heaven, seated in one of the most high, highest places, okay, on thrones, okay? And, um, and so uh, Jesus was telling this person uh, who had the vision, you see, uh, uh, the whole idea... Okay, sometimes we think today, uh, you know, oh, I just need to do so many things. I got to go on 50 missions trips, you know, I got to give, you know, all this. And, you know, if you do those things and God has, you know, told you to do that and, and you've been spending time in prayer and you really love God and you're doing that, it's good. But don't just do it because you feel like, oh, I'm going to rack up rally points because for each person is different. 
Uh, on the other hand, for this person uh, in the vision, by the way, uh, he saw that there was a minister. Jesus showed him that there was a minister on earth who had a huge ministry. Thousands and thousands of people follow his ministry. Uh, but when he got to heaven, uh, this person actually saw in the vision that he was actually last. He was amongst one of the least in the kingdom of heaven. And uh, in, 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 in the heaven, uh, this person was saying how God gave him grace and actually uh, allowed him to go to heaven, even though, uh, because when he was in his ministry, he was in a lot of strife and he was in a lot of doing many things for selfish motive. Um, but, you know, even though that was the case, you know, uh, God had grace on him and he was able to enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, but don't bank on that, guys. Don't bank on the fact that, you know, you can live, you know, worse, you know, how, as bad as you can and enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, uh, that's uh, like walking on a very icy uh, ground. You don't want to do that. But the, the bottom line is this. The bottom line is that, uh, you know, for some of you who say, I don't even believe in these visions. We're we talking about these extra biblical stuff. Well, at least believe the Bible. At least believe what Jesus said. Because Jesus says, surely I tell you, okay, uh, you know, at the end of the day, in, in the kingdom of heaven, the, at the end of the day, the first is going to become last and the last is going to become first. That's why for those of you who want to be the greatest, let him be the servant of all. So what does that mean? What does that tell us? It tells us simply that uh, for us, Again, I want to encourage you, keep on serving Jesus no matter how small you think that is, that thing you're doing is. It may be just, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe um, ha buying lunch for a person and talking to him about Jesus, praying for him and just listening to the person. I don't know. Everybody's different. You may not go overseas. You may not travel all over the world. You know, uh, you may not do whatever you, uh, the, the preacher that you admire be doing. But you know what? As long as you're faithful to what is given you, then that's all that's going to matter. Because look at that person who just died, and I believe that testimony in all my heart. Uh, the person who was, you know, living on the streets, okay, and he, and he just covered his body on, on, on that person who was dying, who passed out. And he was seated in the highest place in heaven, you know. And the reason I believe is because it's scriptural. Jesus says that he was first, going to be last. He was going to be last, going to be first. It all depends on the motive. I'm telling you, there are many people today who we don't know, uh, especially the missionaries who are in the mountains and, you know, uh, places they've never heard of and the tribes we never heard of. Those people, okay, they're going to get huge rewards if, they're, if their heart is, is right with God and, and they're truly repentant and truly believe in Jesus. They're going to enter the kingdom of heaven and all these people, you know, we go into heaven, we're going to start realizing, oh my goodness, who are these people? And we're going to start finding out all these stories about them. So uh, the only reason I'm telling you about all this stuff is because I want to encourage you. Uh, God has put each one of us, the body of Christ, at a certain position, at a certain um, place, country, location, time for a specific reason. And that is that we can together accomplish His task to give Him glory because Jesus Christ is the chief commander of the entire army in heaven. And if we will do our jobs, if we will, if we will love, if we will be humble, and will we, uh, if we will just go in and preach the gospel, well, first of all, if we will uh, be genuine in our, in our faith, and honor God in that way, and live holy lives, genuine faith, then go and, and, and preach the gospel and love other people in that way, then that is what we want need to do at this moment. And um, because I want to make sure uh, that when I see Jesus, that he says that I have been faithful to all the talents that he has given me. And wouldn't you want it the same thing? Wouldn't you want it when you see Jesus, that he says, you have been faithful to these few, very few talents that I've given you, and so now enter into the joy of my Lord. And uh, because you're faithful to these few little things, I will now give you rule over many things and that's what we want to do that's what you and i we're striving for entering through that narrow gate uh through genuine faith and repentance in, in jesus christ and continue to live a holy life and before him and uh, so may you continue to serve god may you be encouraged to serve god uh knowing that he's going to reward you jesus is not going uh, the bible says that he is not uh, unjust to forget your labor he is definitely going to honor what you do as long as you do it in genuine love and faith for him okay guys so i just want to bless you that you'll continue to follow after jesus and for those people who have been hurt for those people who have, you know feel like they need to give up i pray for you right now by the power of the holy spirit okay that you will continue to serve Jesus Christ and to honor Him, to do whatever He's given you to do, so that when He comes back, He will call you faithful. That in no time, in no time in your life will you give up, but that you'll continue to fight as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, just like what Paul said. So may that be for you and may that be for me, so that when our King comes back, we will be ready and we can honor Him and we can wait for the great things that await for us in heaven. Okay, guys, may you continue to rest 
in that assurance through Jesus Christ, by His grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be blessed, and God bless you.